So this is the mise en place for our chickpea and sweet potato stew. That's a vegan dish that you can certainly make for a carnivore if you just grill some chicken and stir some chicken in at the end, or even add some, uh, maybe like a grilled lamb chop, lamb chop on the side would be delicious. But I've got some sweet potato. Uh, these are the orange sweet potatoes. Uh, I've got some chopped onion and garlic and ginger in there. I have some olives. You can use whatever kind of olives you, you want. I have the huge Kirkland olives, so I use those. Some chopped up dates. Our spices are some coriander, some cumin, some garam masala, some chickpeas, and a can of whole parade, uh, to, uh, tomatoes. But again, I, I squeezed between my fingers because you get, you get better flavor from whole tomatoes than buying the already pre-chopped up tomatoes, I think. Uh, the one thing that's not on here is the chopped cilantro. I will put that on at the very end. And again, this is a really basic stew and you can finish it however you want. You could throw on some toasted almonds. You could throw on some pistachios. I love pistachios in a stew like this. Uh, you could put in some preserved lemon rind. Um, it's a very, very malleable recipe that again is a, this, this technique that we've done several times. And this is sort of a representative of a, uh, of a vegetarian and a vegan dish since we talked about sustainability and the meat industry this week. So to cook our stew, I'm gonna heat up a pot with some olive oil. This is a nice Northern African dish, so it needs that olive oil. It's more of the appropriate flavor than there would be butter. And hopefully you're starting to notice a very common technique when we're doing dishes like this, whether it's been the stew or the butter chicken or the clam chowder, tomato sauce, there's a lot of recipes start with the basics of some kind of aromatics, whether it's onions, carrots, and celery, or just onions, maybe leeks, ginger, uh, a lot of recipes that are, are stews or soups, casseroles, start with sweating your aromatics. I'm gonna sweat these for four or five minutes until they're nice and translucent. After they've been going for a couple minutes, I'm gonna add in some garlic and some ginger. There we go. Mash the ginger. Really very finely mashed the garlic. Make sure I use the right hand so I stop. Finally at the end of the semester, I'm getting this video technique down. And I don't want this to cook for too long because garlic can burn really quickly. It's very high in sugar. Some people like that charred garlic taste. I don't particularly care for it. And then I'm going to add in our spices because they are going to toast in the oil. Wow, it smells great. Just that quick amount of sauteing. I'm gonna let those sit over a nice low heat for a good three or four minutes to let those spices kind of bloom. And once they've gone for a while, I'm gonna add in my tomatoes. And put in a nice little pinch of salt. And again, a little grinding of black pepper. Well, there was a little bit of red pepper in that uh, spice mix. I don't need to go too high on the black pepper yet. We will we will taste that as it goes along. And then while that's cooking, I'm gonna add in my, oh, I might need a bigger pot. I'm gonna add in my sweet potatoes. Because as the tomatoes cook down, then the sweet potatoes are going to cook. the heat. I'm going to cover this. So I get the right lid. Perfect. I'm going to turn that down. I'm going to let this cook for about probably 20 minutes to get the sweet potatoes cooked. So now that this has been bubbling away for about 20 minutes, I'm going to add in our chickpeas. And stir them up. If you notice, I put this into a bigger pot. 
And because these are canned chickpeas, I'm just going to let them kind of stew together for a while. There we go. And I'm going to stir in my dates so that they start to absorb some of the tomato liquid and kind of soften up a bit. I still could have used a bigger pot. That's all right. And finally, I'm going to stir in my olives. And that's going to get covered again. And just kind of stew together for yeah, maybe another 20 minutes or so. Like most stews, this gets better as it sits overnight. But we will see how that looks in about 20 minutes. So after it has been cooking for another 20 minutes or so, button. I'm gonna come over, oh, that looks just great. I'm going to take a nice spoonful of this. This would be great on top of some rice. What I'm going to do is I have some microgreens. If you just have regular cilantro or mint, that's that's perfectly fine. It's not there. But I happen to have some in the fridge. So I'm using those as our chickpea stew. And that would be beautiful with a piece of grilled fish on top, a piece of grilled chicken maybe a lamb chop or just vegan the way that it is. Beautiful, smells so good. Perfect on a 78 degree day in Pacifica. <laughs>